Hi, this is Brian with Profitless Media and Post. Today, we're going to take a look at a full VFX shot from beginning to end. In this shot, we're going to add animated 3D text to our scene and have it animate through several objects and cast shadows on all the objects within the scene. This will be part one of a two-part tutorial. In part one, we'll go through the entire process of tracking our camera in Synthize, setting up geometry to be used for our shadow catchers and rotoscoping, and exporting to DaVinci Resolve Fusion using distortion workflow. In part two of the tutorial, we will import our camera and set up DaVinci Resolve Fusion for our undistorted workflow. We'll animate our 3D text to start off in the distance and then animate to go through three poles and end up in front of the camera. Then we'll set up 3D rotoscoping using our 3D camera solve to speed up the rotoscoping for each one of the poles. And then finally, we'll set up shadow catchers for the ground and the three poles so as the text moves through our scene it interacts realistically with the real world space. So let's head over into Synthize. Okay, so now we're here in Synthize and I've loaded up our footage. I'm just gonna make sure that we have our start and end frame are correct and our frame rate. And this is stock footage, so we don't know any of the backplate information. So we'll leave everything at its defaults and press okay. And so let's just take a quick look at this shot. Okay, so this is, should be a pretty easy shot to track. We could, should be able to use the auto tracker and get a good result. Uh, one thing I noticed is that the footage is a little grainy. So I'm gonna go up to the shot menu, go to image preparation, and we're gonna blur this just a little bit, maybe two. That'll help smooth out the camera motion. Uh, we are gonna be using a lens distortion workflow. So we're gonna need to go over to the lens tab turn on calculate distortion and now we can use the auto tracker so let's go back over to the summary press auto and see what we get and I can tell right away that we have some bad trackers so let's clean that up real quick let's go up to the track menu go to clean up trackers and we're gonna turn on the bad frames so anything over 1.7 will be shut off on those frames and I'm also going to turn off clear all blips. And I'll show you why I did that in a minute. So let's just hit fix. And then we need to resolve. So let's go over to the solver and just hit go. Press OK. And now we have an error of 0.3, which is quite good. So let's take a look. I would say that that's a decent track. So now let's talk about what we need from our 3D tracking. So we're gonna have this 3D text that starts here by this pole, and then we're gonna have it as the shot goes through, at the end, it's gonna come in front of these three poles and actually go through the poles on its way to the end. So we're gonna need geometry or a card for each one of these poles positioned. Uh, we also wanna know where this position is in 3D space, and we're gonna want a mesh for the ground and the ground is very uneven, so we're going to use all these tracking markers to build a mesh. So before we add the geometry, let's make sure we have the points we need. So we're going to need a point that's right around this pole, just so we know where it is in 3D space. Also going to need some points on this pole. So one way that we could do that is let's go over to the Features panel. And this is why in the tracking menu, when I did the cleanup trackers, I had the clear all blips turned off, because if I didn't, it would clear these all out and you would have to redo this calculation. Not the biggest deal in the world, but it saves a little bit of time. So all these markers that you can see here, all these blips that are all over the screen can actually be turned into tracking markers. And we can do that by clicking on peel and we can come in here and pick which points we want. So I want some on that pole. Try to find some good points, and maybe that one. And the other thing that we want is a point that's out here on this pole. Now that's a lot of stuff going on there. So what we can do is, with the minimum trail and force selected, you can just pull up this number of the minimum trail so that we can get rid of all these trackers until we get to a point where now I can kind of see here. So the, all these trackers that are on the screen now last for at least 226 frames for the entire sequence. So let's see, I'm gonna zoom in here and I'd say that one right there. So that one's pretty close to there. And so now we have all the points we need. So let's go back over to our solver 
And at this point, let's change from automatic to refine and hit go. And let's see what we got here. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. But one of the things I noticed, I know that these trackers here are, were all in the same position. So we're going to have to do something about that. The first thing we'll do is and under the track menu, let's go to coalesce nearby trackers. And what that's going to do is it's going to look for trackers that are in the same position and then combine them. So let's hit examine. Okay, so that's already grabbed two. And if you hit coalesce, it'll make those into a single tracker. And it looks like this tracker here is actually the same point as this one. So what we can do is actually combine these even if Synthize doesn't think they go together. So holding down control, just circle around them and then right click, combine trackers. The same thing is true for this point, these two points up here. So I'm gonna hold down control, select those and go right click, combine trackers. Okay, and once we're done with that, let's hit refine again. And let's just make sure that we didn't screw anything up. Okay, just make sure everything looks good. Yeah, so it looks pretty good. So now that we have all our tracking points, now it's time to set up our coordinate system. A quick way to set up a coordinate system is to come over to the coordinates panel. And if you click on this asterisk three button, you get to pick three points, the origin, the X axis, which will be the scale and the last point will be the ground plane. So I'm just going to pick this point. This one will be on the X axis and then maybe that point. Hit yes. Okay. Okay. And now you can see that we have our coordinate set up. I can tell just by looking in this view here that the camera is a little tilted. So we can check that real quick by changing the layout from quad to quad perspective and go into the perspective window and click on lock. And when we do that, let's see if I can make this a little bit bigger. Uh, when we do that, you can see we have our uh, ground grid and we have our horizon line here in the back. And so what we can do is manually adjust this last step. Let's go over to the 3D tab. And if we come over to this button hole, just click on that. And when you click on that, it's going to lock the camera and the scene together so that we can move the entire scene together. So let's just click on the rotation and let's rotate the horizon line and see if we can get it to match up a little bit better. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that's pretty good. So the next thing we can do is we should start working on setting up our mesh for the ground. And a good way to do that is let's go into the camera view and this will just make it easier for us to select points. We can just lasso. Oops. We got to turn off the um, locked camera. And then if we just come in here, we can select all the points on the ground. That way you want as part of the ground mesh. And we can go through and holding down shift, you can add to that selection. One thing to keep in mind is you don't really want too much of a cluster. Like you wouldn't want to grab both of these. It just messes up the geometry. So a nice spread is, is a good, is a good way to go. Was that? Yeah. Yeah. Well, so we'll say that looks good. So now we have all these points selected. The way that we can set up the mesh is we can come over to layout, go back over to perspective. And now let's turn off the lock so that we're looking at the points. So the way this works is that the triangulation will happen depending on where your camera is located. So we want to click on orbit and go up above. So we're looking straight down on our scene to project our geometry. And just right click, go down to mesh operations and convert to mesh. And so now all the points are ready to be meshed and then right click again, mesh operations, triangulate. And once we do that, you can see we have a nice mesh for our ground plane. We can hit lock. And then now we can take a look and make sure that everything looks good. Now we need to set up some cards for the positions on these poles. 
So let's go into change our layout to quad perspective. And now what we're going to do is we're going to grab, let's grab some of these points here by shift selecting, oops, by shift selecting each one of these points on this pole. And then now I'm going to right click inside this window and if you go to other modes, let's go to add cards. And now that we can add cards. This card's position will be based on the selection that we have in here. So now we have uh, a card located right on the face of these points. And we can check to make sure that that's working well just by going through. Now obviously these are cylinders and we're using a card. So there might be a little bit of a, a little slide uh, with the parallax, but for the most part it should work pretty well. Yeah, that looks pretty good. That looks like it's pretty locked on. So now we need to do the same thing with the other poles. So I'm just going to grab a couple points here and then just put a card for that one. And we'll do the same thing over here. And there we go. And let's see. I'm just going to double check and make sure that these are lining up nicely. Okay, this one here doesn't seem to be working as well as I want. So let's zoom in here. We might need to turn it a little bit. Okay, that, that's much better. I was watching this edge here and it was sliding a little too much, but just by turning it like this is um, pretty good. Maybe even bring it back a little bit like that. Yeah, that's even better. Okay. Okay, so now we have our all of our cards. Now we're ready to export out to Fusion. Before we do that, let's save our project first. Let's save it on my desktop. And then let's go over to the summary. Before we export out, we need to use our lens workflow. And you can do it here or you can do it in the lens panel. And just hit, click on lens workflow and make sure that we have redistorted because we want to undistort the image and then do our composite and then redistort it. So I'll press OK. Now we're ready to export. So we just go up to File, Export, and let's look for Fusion Composition. Just save it on our desktop. And let me put this to the defaults. Uh, so the things we want to change, I like to change this timeline setup so that it matches image sequence numbers. That seems to work well in almost every situation, but use whatever you need. And everything else can pretty much stay the same. The map file type, you can change this to uh, whatever kind you want for your distortion maps. Uh, the choice is up to you. TIFF is, seems to be fine. And if you wanted to, you could export to clipboard. And what that'll do is save your project to the clipboard, and then you can paste it inside your Fusion Comp. But I'm going to use a different method for importing our Fusion Comp. So with those things set, let's hit OK. And everything's exported, and now we're ready to get into Fusion.